Welcome back to Wood Gas Stove Science, Paint Can Stove Optimization Part 2. Uh, here is the results of uh, the build, um, and we'll get back to this a little bit later. Uh, but first of all, I want to talk about what we did in Part 1. So in Part 1, uh, we looked at how we would prep our paint can. Uh, and that was using a safety can opener, so the top was able to pop off. Uh, then we talked about um, different cans and our can selection and how we would prepare uh, that second can. And by the way, the Mexican food was very good. So now let's talk about the importance of secondary air. The secondary air uh, actually caps off the burn chamber and keeps an oxygen-free zone between the fuel and uh, where the secondary air is burning. Uh, that's very important um, and helps us produce uh, wood gas. The idea is that the, or the secondary air holes should be uh, close enough together that they form a solid cap of flame around the top uh, and they should be big enough that they flow air well but not so big that you lose a lot of pressure. From past experience I've found that the size of the hole uh, for the secondary air should be around 3 16 of an inch. The holes should not be a whole bunch more than say five eighths of an inch apart or possibly three quarters of an inch apart. If they get much further apart than that, they can't form a good solid cap uh, over your paralysis zone. Uh, so here I have um, used a piece of tape around the top of the can to figure out the circumference of the can. And then uh, I've marked off 16 holes. Oh no, warning, math alert. Uh, so I've mentioned that I had 16 holes and they were 3 16 of an inch in diameter. Uh, so we need to come up with the area of our secondary air. So here we can see that the area of a circle is pi r squared. Uh, and we understand through math that pi is 3.14 and r squared is the radius of the uh, secondary hole times the radius of the secondary hole. So the diameter of the secondary hole is 3 16. So the radius of the secondary hole is 3 32. We convert that to a decimal by taking 3 divided by 32 and we come up with 0 0.094 inches. Uh, so then pi r squared equals 3.14 times 0 0.094 times 0 0.94. Uh, that'll give us the area of the secondary holes, which is 0 0.027. We multiply that by 16 and we come up with 0.44 square inches. So we know we want a 5 to 1 ratio, so we multiply the 0.44 times 5 and we come up with 2.2 .2 square inches of primary air needed. Now I've picked quarter inch diameter for uh, the primary holes and half of that is an eighth inch, so we'll convert an eighth inch to decimal and it's 0.125. So uh, we multiply pi, which is 3.14 times 0.125 times 0.125 and we end up with a primary air hole with an area of 0.049 uh, and we take 2.2 and we divide that by 0.049 and we end up with 45 holes needed. Phew! Okay, so we know we need 45 quarter inch holes. Um, so I know that I'm going to put 16 around the outside of the can uh, which leaves me 29 left for the bottom. Uh, so the uh, what I'm using here is my center finder on a uh, steel scale and um, I'm just basically drawing lines um, equally spaced around this and I know that I need to draw uh, eight lines which will give me 16 points um, around the outside and then I divide the diameter up um, into four uh, so I have one hole in the center, the next ring will have four holes, the next ring will have eight holes, and the next ring will have 16 holes. Uh, that will equal 29 holes, which will give me the exact uh, 5 to 1 ratio that I need. Uh, so here you can see that on each hole I'm putting in a pilot hole, um, and a pilot hole is just a smaller diameter hole so it's easier to drill, uh, and then I'm going around the outside. Uh, here I'm drilling 3 16 holes around the top, and then I've changed it to uh, quarter inch bits, and I'm drilling around the uh, outside of the bottom. Uh, then I'm drilling the remaining 29 holes in the bottom and uh, here I'm just taking a file to remove any sort of burrs um, or hanging pieces of metal that can interrupt the airflow. Uh, and that's very important. Um, it's not only important for safety of you uh, building the stove but it's also important for um, the airflow so it's not interrupted by a small uh, particle of metal hanging out. Uh, here I'm doing my uh, vortex tweak where I'm taking the drill that I drilled around the outside which was 3 16 and I'm actually bending these holes uh, and you can see it displaces the material inside uh, to give uh, the hole sort of a rotating um, area where the air comes in it actually will rotate around in circles. 
At this point, I'd like to mention that uh, my revenue and my views have been dropping dramatically. Um, so I'm not sure if YouTube's algorithm has changed or not. I'm not sure what's going on. But if you are getting anything out of these videos um, and uh, it would be great if you could like them um, when you're watching them. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe, and that'll help me considerably with um, with making more of these videos. Here you can see that I'm working on the outside of the can, and I'm, I'm drilling a 9 16 hole, seven 9 16 holes around the outside of the can. Um, and they're evenly spaced. The only place I'm not putting a hole where the eighth hole would go was near that seam, um, because the seam on this can uh, is uh, very flimsy. Uh, the material on the outside is very thin uh, and can break real easily. Uh, so now that I'm done with those fresh air intake holes around the outside, I'm just going to do a quick burn uh, so you can see how this thing burns. Um, so I'm starting off with wood pellets with a little bit of uh, heat, liquid heat in the yellow bottle. Uh, basically it is just alcohol, um, which helps me start the wood pellets. Uh, and here you can see that the wood pellets are starting to burn and the alcohol is burning off. Um, so this is actually um, catches on fire very quickly, uh, which is great. Uh, and here you can see the wood pellets are actually burning. Um, and we're approaching at this point about a three minute mark. Um, and you'll all of a sudden start seeing uh, the jets, uh, the the secondary jets uh, starting to light up. Um, and that happened around three and a half minutes. And um, that's actually pretty fast uh, for that to start to start working. Um, so as you can see here in a few minutes, the um, the jets are not as strong as um, what I would like to see. Uh, and I'm sort of attributing that to the fact that the outer can and the inner can um, are not really close together. Uh, they're not as close as I'd like to see that. Uh, so I'm going to have to come up with a little bit of a different plan uh, to make this really um, a super efficient stove. Um, but uh, actually it's outside in the wind right now without a windscreen at all. The only windscreen that it does have is that one hole that is uh, not drilled in the fresh air intake area. Um, so I pointed that towards the wind. Um, so basically at five, five minutes, um, the flame looks really good. Um, if you do look at it from above, there is a uh, spin to the flame, um, but it's not really powerful enough to close off that paralysis zone. Uh, so what I'm going to do in the next few days is actually fashion a uh, flame concentrator, which is a cover that will go over the top of the stove and leave a smaller diameter in the center uh, for the flame to come out. Um, and uh, the possibility of forming a um, pot stand, uh, which sort of gives a chimney effect and also does some flame stabilization. Uh, so hopefully both of those will, will help out considerably. Um, so at this point, I'd like to ask um, everybody uh, what they'd like to see in the future. And I appreciate um, anybody that's left comments um, and asking me to do different things. Uh, one of the um, interesting ones is an adjustable stove. So I may be fashioning a ring to go around the uh, fresh air in intake uh, to see if we can come up with a way of slowing this burn down or speeding this burn up. Um, so that, that will be interesting. So please um, input as much as you'd like um, and let me know what you'd like to see. Uh, so uh, please enjoy the rest of this video um, where you're looking at the results of the paint can uh, wood gas stove optimization part two. Uh, stay tuned for the third um, installment of this uh, and hopefully uh, we can really optimize this design. Thank you for joining me. Goodbye.